I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I know that the Lord has kept you safe. You are sound and healthy by the grace of God, just like the way the Lord God has been so gracious to my life. I am Pastor Joseph Ngaroya from Full Gospel Churches of Kenya, Gidurai 44, and I want to bring the word of God to you. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Before I bring the word of God to you, kindly let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I commit myself before your hand because I know that I am a vessel. I am the clay and you are the potter. And I pray that you're going to use me as a vessel of honor to, to, to become a blessing to your, to your people wherever they are listening me from or viewing me from i pray that you you're going to minister to them and you're going to speak to them thank you because you are good and gracious for it is in christ jesus we pray that you may grant us a spirit of understanding in jesus mighty name i pray and believe i want to share with you the word of god from the Bible in the book of Exodus, chapter 33, from verse 11 up to verse 15. This is what the Bible says. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as a man speak with his friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but this young aide, Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Moses said to the people, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and you have found favor with me. If you are a priest with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember this is the nation, this, this is, uh, remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will, will go with you and I will give you rest, verse 15. Then Moses said to him, if your princess does not go with us, do not send us up from here. I want to share with you the theme of my message is the power of the princess of God. This is what I want to share with you. And from verse 11, we have seen a man by the name Moses. This is the man that God chose and depicted to become the deliverer of the Israelite after they were in slavery for a period of more than 400 and that years. So God picked Moses. And here in verse 11, the, the Bible says that the Lord would speak to Moses face to face. So we see it was the custom of God speaking to Moses, just like the Bible says, as a man speak with his friend. And we may ask ourselves, why did God did this to Moses? Why did Moses find God such a favor Moses. with God? And Moses, in turn, he relied wholeheartedly. Actually, he depended on God. He trusted God with all his mind, with all his heart, on God's wisdom. He trusted on God's wisdom. Not only on God's wisdom, but on God's direction. We see that friendship with God for Moses, yeah? It was, a, actually it was a true privilege for Moses unlike any other Israelite. The Israelite, it is not said about Israelite how that God communicated to them face to face. But we see it was just a great honor. It was a privilege that Moses had before the eyes of God, speaking with God face to face, 
just like the Bible has confirmed in verse 11. But we see that Jesus Christ, when he came, when he, call, when he called his disciple, the Bible says that he used to call them, he referred to them as friend. As you can read in the book of John chapter 13, uh, chapter 15 and verse 15. John chapter 15 and verse 15. The Bible says that I will not call you servant, but I will be referring to you as servant. So when God calls us, he expects us to respond to his calling. He wants us to have a close relationship. He wants us to rely on him and even to depend on him. And as a result of that, what God does in our life, he becomes our companion in the mighty name of Jesus. No one has ever walked with God. No one has ever become a friend of God. Then he struggles in, in his life. No one. If you read in the Bible, you will see all those people whom God referred to as friend, just like Abraham, just like Noah, just like Moses, we see that those people, they never struggled in their life. God normally came through their, in, into their life. He chipped into their situation. He came through for, uh, for them when they needed him most in the name of Jesus Christ. So, what I am speaking to you, I want to share with you about the power or, uh, of the presence of God. Because this is what Moses asked God. If I am priest with you, yes, what will you, what is the sign? How will I know that you are together with me? How will I know that you have truly sent me? We see that Moses had that desire. He was so much troubled. He asked God to confirm whether it was him who had called him. Then we see that as he was praying, making this kind of a prayer, God replied because the Bible says that God hear our prayer. We have a God who hear our prayer. And he has given us the mandate to pray. The moment you pray, you and I pray, there is God in heaven to hear our prayer in the name of Jesus. So God responded to the prayer of his servant Moses. And we see in verse 14, the Bible says that the Lord replied to Moses, that my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. So I am saying that it doesn't matter how confused or how confusing the situation may appear to be. The presence of God will bring order into that situation in the name of Jesus. In the passage that we have led, we see that Moses was asking God, just as I have or earlier stated, that he was praying that God will walk with him. He wanted God to give him a sign that for sure if he was together with him, he needed to be assured and God assured him that it is his presence that will go with him in the mighty name of Jesus. We, with the presence of God, we can go anywhere when the presence of God is with us. With the presence of God, we can do anything if at all the presence of God is together with us. This is what the Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 16 and verse 11, that there is fullness of joy in the presence of God. Praise the name of the living God. Where the presence of God is, the Bible says that there is the presence, there is fullness of joy. Out of the presence of God, there is a lot of frustration. Out of the presence of God, there is a lot of discouragement. Out of the presence of God, there is sorrow. Out of the presence of God, there is multiple demons. Out of the presence of God, there is fear. Out of the presence of God, there is sickness. Out of the presence of God, there is distress. Out of the presence of God, there is sin. And I want to ask 
you a very important question as I proceed with my message. Do you have the presence of God with you in your life? Or have you lost the presence of God along the way? More than anything you would desire, ensure that you have his presence with you in the mighty name of Jesus. And this was the most powerful prayer that David made, as we can see in the book of Psalms chapter 51 and verse 11. Psalms chapter 51 and verse 11. David, when he thought about the power of the presence of God, he made this prayer. And I would wish that you make this your prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Psalms chapter 51 and verse 11, the Bible says that do not cast me from your presence. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. The worst place to be is where God used to be. Praise the name of the living God. And this is why David made this prayer that do not cast me away or out of your presence. If God wanted to take everything, everything, it was like David was telling God, if you want to take away anything or everything in my life, don't take your presence. Don't take me away from your presence. Health can be taken from you. Job or money can be taken from you. And many, 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 many things. The crown can be taken from you. Hallelujah. Money, position, titles, everything that we have, wealth and riches can be taken away from us. But listen to this, my dear brothers, my dear viewer, wherever you are viewing me from. Don't allow yourself, don't, and I say this, don't allow yourself to be out of the presence of God. We need to have the presence of God in our, in our life. And it, is, and it is a wonderful experience. Anyone who has the presence of God in his life, actually he is not just an ordinary person. And it is essential in our day-to-day -day life. And as a result of that, there was no a good fellowship between him and the, the rest of the, uh, the Israelites. And we find God telling Moses that he was about to destroy these people. But we see Moses entreating God. And he needed that assurance. Assurance. If it is you, God, who has called me into the ministry, show me, assure me with something. And then we see in Exodus, uh, where we have read chapter 3, verse 14, God assuring Moses that his presence will go with him. So, not once they wanted to stone him to death. Not once. They had humiliated this guy. But we see what kept him strong, what kept him going, was when he remembered God's promise that my presence will go with you and I will give you rest in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You can have trouble everywhere. You can have trouble together with you, especially at a time like this, as a result of what we are, we are going through, or as a result of what we are experiencing, this pandemic by the name COVID-19. We can have trouble together with us, but you can have fear, uh, uh, but, but, but you, can, you, you can cast that fear that may try to ruin your life when you remember who is with you, when you remember that the presence of God is together with you. Praise the name of the living God. So it is wonderful thing to be in the presence of the Lord as we can see from this account that when God assured Moses that his presence will go with him, it is a wonderful moment to be in the presence of the Lord. To be in the presence of the Lord, it is a wonderful moment. Likewise, to be out of the presence of the Lord is a very dangerous experience. As we can see from the book of Genesis chapter 4 and verse 16. This is a very familiar story we are all uh, aware. 
It is the story about chapter 4 is the story about the first death in the world. The first death in the world to give us an account of two brothers, the sons of Adam and Eve. This was Cain and Abel. And we see this gentleman, as the Bible says, they all presented themselves in the presence of the Lord to worship the Lord. But we see that what Cain had presented before the Lord was not acceptable. And as a result of God rejecting his sacrifice, he became so angry and so jealous with his brother Abel because the sacrifice and the offering of Abel was accepted by the Lord. And so as a result of that, he came up with an idea that he is not going to allow his brother Abel to outshine him. And so he plotted how he is going to kill him. And he told him that they were supposed to go to the field. He requested his brother in verse 8. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were there in the field, the Bible says that Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Praise the name of the living God. A jealous person is a dangerous person because he can do anything. As a result of his jealousy to his brother, the Bible says that he killed him. And that is why we see the first death which is recorded in the Bible. When Cain killed his brother, God had to come in and he asked Cain, where is your brother? Where is your brother? That is found in Genesis chapter 4 and verse 9. We know the story. Because I don't want to dwell so much on that story, what I want you to see is the danger in the, outside the presence of God. So after, he, after God asked Cain this question, it is like this man didn't know that he was speaking or he was answering to God. He was so bitter, so jealous. He had killed, he had shed his brother's blood. And as a result of that, the Bible says that God pronounced a judgment. He pronounced a judgment upon him. That he is going to banish him out of his presence. And he is going to become a vagabond. He is going to become a wanderer. He is going to wander around the world. And the Bible says that he gave him a sign. He placed a mark upon his life. That judgment you can read in the book of Genesis chapter 4 and verse 15, uh, 14 part B. The Bible says that he made him a, a, to become a restless. He, beca he made him to become a wanderer on the earth. And the Bible says that out of that he, uh, fear, he was so much afraid because he feared that anybody who is going to come, ac uh, to come across him, he will be killed. But the issue here is, in verse 15, Genesis chapter 4, verse 15, the Bible says, But the Lord said to him, Not so, if anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vigilance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one, uh, no one who found him would kill him. Verse 16 says this as you listen. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence. Cain went uh, 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 from, uh, out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Hallelujah. Bible says that Nod, as you, uh, uh, as I was just doing my research to understand the word Nod, I came to understand that Nod mean wandering. Wandering mean no home. Wandering mean no country. Wandering mean no place to call your own. Wandering mean no refuge or security. So this is how life is when we go out of the presence of God. L uh, listen, my brother or my sister, wherever you are viewing me from or wherever you are listening me from. For you to enjoy being in the presence of God, God attaches some condition. There are some condition that God attaches to anyone, to anybody who want him to be, uh, to, to, to accompany him in his life. As you can read in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 2, 
Second Chronicle chapter 15 and verse 2. Second Chronicle chapter 15 and verse 2. This is what the Bible says. Uh, yeah, the condition that God attaches to the people who want him to accompany them in their life. Second Chronicle chapter 15 verse 2. The Bible says, he went out to meet Ah, or we, we can start from verse 1. The Spirit of God came to Azariah, son of Oded. He went out to meet Asa and said to him, Listen to me. Now this is the condition. Listen to me and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you when you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. If you forsake him, he will forsake you. That is the condition that he has attached with his presence. If you want God, the presence of God to accompany you in your life, if you want the presence of God to accompany you in your family, if you want, if you want the, the presence of God to accompany you in your workplace, the Bible says then you have to seek him when he is found. The Bible says that when you forsake him, he will forsake you. So God attaches a condition to anyone who wants his presence to accompany him, and that is seeking him. In the New Testament, in the book of James chapter 4 and verse 8, we can relate, compare the two. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 4 and verse 8, we can compare what the condition in the Old Testament and the condition that God has given to his people, whoever is desiring that his presence will walk with him. The book of James chapter 4 and verse 8, this is what the Bible says. We can start from verse 7. Submit yourself then to God. James chapter 4 verse 7 and 8. Submit yourself, uh, yourself, yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will free from you. The Bible says in verse 8, Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinner, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Praise the name of the living God. As I continue with this message, I pray that God, through his spirit, he will allow his presence to accompany you in your life, in your day-to-day -day life in the name of Jesus Christ. He will allow his presence to accompany you in all your endeavors in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, we read powerful testimonies of what God's presence has done in the life of his people. In the book of Psalms chapter 114, Psalms chapter 114, from verse 1 to 8, if you read the whole chapter, you can see the benefit of the presence of God in our life. The benefit of the presence of God in our life. Psalms chapter 114 from verse 1 up to verse 8. This is what the Bible says. Yes. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from uh, the, uh, Egypt, the house of Jacob from people of foreign tongue, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled. The Jordan turned back. In the mountains skipped like ram. The hills like ram. Why was it? O oh, sea that you, you fled. O oh, Jordan that you turned back. You mountain that you skipped like rams. You hills like lambs. Tremble, O oh, earth, at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool, the hard rock into springs of water. Praise the name of the living God. So, some of the benefit that has been listed here is that we see that the presence of God, with the presence of God, doors in life will be opened. With the presence of God in your life, obstacles are overcome. Praise the name of the living God. We see with the presence of God, there is lifting of troubles. Troubles have to be away or have to be removed out of your life. With the, the presence of God, as we can see here, if the Bible says that gui God guided his people's step and etc. and etc. So before I conclude my sermon, I kindly request us 
to be aware of what the presence of God can do to our life. We need also to be aware of the danger awaiting us when the, we are not in the presence of God or when the presence of God is not together with us. Praise the name of the living God. So, as you can see the whole chapter of Psalms chapter 114, you can desire that the presence of God will accompany you in all your life. Desire not to be out of the presence of God like Cain. Because the Bible says that he was he, he, he moved away from the presence of God. But I urge you wherever you are, let not uh, the, uh, the troubles make you move from the presence of God. Whatever we are experiencing now, it will become a history sometimes later. But what we are supposed to do is to remain, to remain steady. We need to remain put. We need to stand firm to be in the presence of God. We are experiencing this, uh, we are experiencing this pandemic. I want to assure you that the one thing that you need to uh, the desire in your life that will transform your life, that will transform your family, that will transform your business is the presence of God in that business, is the presence of God in your family, is the presence of God in your life. The moment you go, the God walk with you, favor, favor will become your portion in the name of Jesus. Good health, victory, breakthrough will become your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. How much I pray that even after this pandemic, you, you are not going to walk out of the presence of God just like Cain did. The Bible has confirmed that in the book of uh, uh, Genesis, that Cain walked out of the presence of God. Many people have walked out of the presence of God because of trouble, because of lack, because uh, they have reached to a point whereby they don't trust God anymore. They have prayed, and it is like God is not hearkening to their cry. But we need to, st to stay put, just like what the servants of God did in the mighty name of Jesus. So I am praying for you, as much as I continue praying for myself, that you are not going to walk out of the presence of God. There is power, there is victory, there is breakthrough, there is health, there is peace, there is joy in the presence of God in the mighty name of Jesus. May you make the presence of God your habitation. May you remain there, whether you have money or whether you don't have money. But I am assured, I am very much convicted in my spirit that no one has ever been in the presence of God. When God's accompany you, you will never suffer lack in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take that and you, you need to believe because it is the word of God. That whoever abides in the presence of God, he will never suffer shame in the mighty name of Jesus. Let me pray for you as I wind up my message. But one thing that I want to encourage you is to seek to remain and to be in the presence of God all your day of your life in the name of Jesus. God bless you so much as I pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we have heard your word just like you assured Moses that your presence is going to accompany him together with the rest of the Israelite. And when it did, your presence accompanied this man Nothing stood on their way. The Bible, as we have read in the Bible, in the book of Psalms, chapter 114, the Bible has said that mountains skipped like ram, their hills ran like ram. The Bible says that mountain skipped like, uh, like ram before your princes. They trembled before your princes. Nations and even kings trembled before your princes. And as a result of your princes, you gave them rest in the mighty name of Jesus. You gave them victory over the kings of nations in the mighty name of Jesus. We desire that your princes is going to accompany us even after this pandemic, that you will be together with us in our business, in our family 
family, in our workplace. You're going to accompany our children when they go back to school, when they go back to their colleges, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Jehovah Adonai, we desire that your presence is going to abide with us in the mighty name of Adonai to be blessed in the land. We are going to be blessed in the city. We are going to be blessed, Jehovah Adonai, in the land for the glory and honor of your holy name. Bless my viewer and my listener, for it is in Christ Jesus I pray and believe. God bless you so much. May you desire the presence of God to accompany you wherever you will be. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.